First, we need to obtain the software from Isonus' website. From the home page, click on Support. Then select the Software Downloads link. From here, you can download the Crystal Matrix software and any other supporting manuals or documentation you might need. Once the download is complete, we can begin the installation. Proceed through the installation wizard. You will need to register the software with a name and a company. Please note that if using Windows 7, Windows Server 2007, Server 2008, or Vista, do not install in the file path seen here. Choose whether or not you want to create backups of replaced files and leave the default components selected. Select a program manager group and begin the installation. Click through any prompts that may pop up. The software has now finished its installation. Please make note of the default administrative password, a password. This can be reset within the administrative program. You will be prompted to restart the computer in order to complete the installation. Once PowerNet card readers have been physically installed, we can use the Isonus Plug and Play program to connect the readers to the network. Isonus Plug and Play is an installation aid for IP reader controllers. Use the default password, which is a password. Verify the IP address of the Isonus software and click the Find button to search for devices that are communicating with the network. Any connected devices will appear in the list below. Once we have found our reader controllers, we will use the Crystal Access Administrator application to define the system and how it should operate. Isonus automatically licenses itself for 30 days, but after this time period, you must register your software. Fill in all fields and click Register. A follow-up email will be sent to the registered email address. Now we can log in to the Crystal Access system and begin configuring the software. The first step in configuring our system is to add a controller supervisor. Right-click on the controller network object and select Insert. All of the default settings here can remain the same, except for the name. Change the name and click OK. Now we will add a door by right-clicking our newly created controller supervisor and selecting Insert. Give the door a name and input the IP address of the intended card reader. Now we can start the controller supervisor service. We want to see a checkmark and magenta icons on our doors. Click on the Doors button to define a door group. Right-click the Door Group object and select Insert. Assign a name to the group and click OK. Select a door group and add doors to the group from the list. Create a shift by clicking the Shifts button. Click Insert to add a shift record. Select the days, times, and shift type that apply. Next, we will create a group of people. From the People menu, select Groups. Click Insert and give the group a name. Now click the People button to add people. Click the Insert button under the primary window on the left. Assign a first and last name, then click the Auto Unique ID button. Select a door from the drop-down list located next to the Read From button. Scan a card at the door which was selected and click the Read From button. The card number will populate automatically. Click OK to continue. 
Now that we have a person associated with a card, it is possible to add an image to that person's profile. Select a person record from the list. On the right, select the Image tab. You can customize images available in the system by pasting image files into the Images subfolder on your Isonus server. It is now possible to assign an image to a person by clicking Select Image. The image will appear within the window on the right. Next, assign a group to which the selected person belongs and close this window. Under the Rights menu, select the Permissions submenu. To insert a new item in the Permissions table, choose a group, a shift, and a door or a door group by highlighting them in the three lists on the left-hand side of the screen. Then press the Insert New Permissions button on the right-hand side of the screen. Then click Full under Compile to update the list of authorized badges in the system. In the pop-up window, once the controller supervisor returns to green, the download is complete. You can close the group permission windows. Next, we want to set the doors to host mode. This means that all operations will be fully controlled from the computer. Click Yes to reset the network timeout and click OK. Agree to apply these changes immediately the door status should change from magenta to blue, confirming that it is running in host mode. Now we will configure the Isonus Notification Request Server. From the TCP IP menu, select Configure. The Listener or Basic tab should be the IP address of the Isonus ACX application server. Start Automatically should also be selected. The Transmitter or Server Connections tab should also be set to the Isonus application server. Enter 1225 for the port number. You may also enter a name for this connection. Click Save when you are finished. Lastly, from the TCP IP menu, select Run to start the application. A new window will appear showing the controller status. To ensure proper communication between Xprotect and Isonus, we need to configure firewall exceptions on both servers. We will start by creating an inbound rule on our Xprotect server. This will be a port-based rule. Select the TCP radio button and define a specific local port range between 85 to 88. We want to allow all connections, and the rule should apply to all three firewall profiles. Give the new rule a name of your choice and click Finish. Lastly, we will need to restart the Windows Firewall service. Repeat this process for the Isonus server as well. The IMACX plugin must be installed on the host computer that is running the Milestone XProtect event server. Before we can install, we must shut down the event server service. Then we can proceed with the installation of the IMACX plugin. The defaults for the wizard are OK, except for the installation file path. Please use the file path shown here. When ready, click Install. When the installation is finished, restart the Milestone XProtect event server. The IMACX application can be installed on any server on the network. However, it is normally installed on the server hosting Isonus Crystal Matrix.
you may proceed with the default settings for the installation. Start the Isonis ACM bridge and click on the Settings tab. Under Milestone ACM, we need to input port number 85 and by remote host, input the IP address of the Xprotect management server. Under Isonis, for the remote host, input the IP address of the INRServe server and remote port of 7101. Use the default username and password for Isonis, which is admin and a password. Set the status polling frequency to 20 seconds and ensure that the Isonis listener port is set to 1225. When finished, click Save and restart the Crystal Access System, the INR Serve server, and the ACM bridge. In the Management Client of your Xprotect system, right-click on the Access Control object and select Create New. Give the system a name and select the plugin from the drop-down menu. Type in the IP address of the Isonis ACM server and use port number 85. The username and password should be from your Xprotect system. Cardholder and reader information will be pulled into the Xprotect system. Now we need to associate doors with cameras. Note, your Xprotect license must be activated in order to proceed with this step. Drag and drop cameras from the list on the right to the card reader of your choice. Be sure to check the Enabled box. You must reapply your Xprotect license following this step. Next, we will define access control events which will trigger alarms. Select the newly created object and click on the Access Control Events tab. Here we can select the events we want to monitor in the Xprotect Smart Client. The Event Category drop-down list assists in triggering events. Select Alarm if you want an alarm to trigger and select Error if you want to see a map notification. Select the Card Holders tab to add pictures to the users that have been imported into our system. Simply select a card holder from the list and click Select Picture. Now we will create alarm definitions. Right click and select Add New. Give the alarm a logical name. By triggering event from the drop down menu, Select Access Control Event Categories. Then choose an event from the next drop down menu. And select a source from which the event should be triggered. For now, the rest of the default settings are acceptable. The final step is to create a rule. Select Rules, right click, and select Add Rule. Give the rule a logical name. We want to perform an action on event. Click the Event link and navigate to the Milestone Xprotect Access Control Module option. Here you will see Access Control Categories and Access Control Events. Events are specific to the event name, whereas categories can contain more than one event. For example, Access Denied Category would be triggered by any Access Denied event. Choose the event or category you would like to use and click OK. Then click the Devices link and choose the door or doors you would like to include in this rule.
add a scheduling option if you would like, or select nothing for this rule to always be active. Next, we must choose an action for the system to perform when an Access Granted event is triggered. Scroll down and select Show Access Request Notifications. Then click the link and select the built-in Access Request Notification. Click Next to continue, and click Finished when you are complete. Once logged in to the Expertech Smart Client, click the Setup button to begin with configuration. Create a new view and give it a name of your choice. From the System Overview pane, click and drag the Access Monitor link to the desired position in the view. Select the door from the drop-down menu you would like to monitor. Based on the door selected, there will be various options related to cameras, events, and commands which you can customize to your liking. When you are satisfied with your selections, click OK. The access monitor is only available in live mode. We will come back to this after we add a map. Create another new view, and from the System Overview pane, click and drag the Map link to the view. Here we are prompted to upload a map. Click the Browse button and select a map from your local machine. From the Map Toolbox, select Add Access Control. Expand the options available and add the desired icons to the map based on their physical location. You may also add cameras to the map. Lastly, it is also possible to add events to the map. These events are configured in the Expertech system and can be used to manually trigger a variety of events, such as opening a door, and this can be activated from an external device, such as a mobile phone or tablet. Reboot the Milestone server and reboot the Isonis Crystal Access. Then refresh the configuration and log back in to the Expertech Smart Client. Test the configuration with card swipes on connected readers and view the results in the Smart Client. In the Alarm Manager tab, we can review any alarms that were triggered based on the alarm definition we previously created in the Expertech Management Client. We also see red circles around the readers associated with our doors. This was triggered by an Access Denied card swipe. The pop-up notifications can be reviewed and closed within this tab. The alarm can be removed by right-clicking and acknowledging the alarm. By selecting the Live tab, we can select the Access Monitor view to review all of the card swipes. Lastly, selecting the map view, we can click the Unlock Door Event button to manually open a door based on an event. This could also be triggered from a mobile device.